The following production is brought to you by the Talkin' Buds Leaf Show. Talking Buds Leaf Show. Where to begin? Since we uh, last convened, the Leafs dropped two in a row. And I was really sort of debating, like, do I come on here and really examine these two? Because there's certain things about them that I really didn't like. And then there's certain things that I'm like, ah, whatever. Man. Let's just, like, we're in the home stretch here let's just get to the end of the season and not nitpick but for the sake of having to do a podcast and find things to discuss two things i want to hit you with we'll start with buffalo i'm not gonna get worked up about losing to a quote-unquote inferior opponent anymore because i'm just coming to terms with the fact that that's who this team is. That's what they are. They they have certain nights and certain opponents where they just don't feel like it, and it's it just is what it is. So I'm not going to get on them for that. I'm not going to yell at them for that. I'm not going to come on here and rant and rave. It is what it is. It was, it was a disappointing loss. It was based on the current race in the standings with the Tampa Bay Lightning. It's a valuable two points that they let slip away, but whatever. Spilt milk. Move on with your life. Second one is the Colorado Avalanche. Overall, I didn't think it was that bad of a game. I thought it was Morgan Riley's best game of the season. I thought we're going to talk about Mitch Marner and his importance in a minute, but it like it just proved. I love the way you put it last night. If you're his agent, you put the tape of this game on and go, I am the heart and soul of this team. Austin Matthews heating up, Ilya Samsonov, whatever. He's playing really well. In my opinion, the debate is over. He's the starting goaltender. Of the Toronto. He's the number one. Matt Murray's the number two. Period. End of discussion as of right now. But, and this is what I want to get your take on. It was just another example of playing a quality hockey team who had the right game plan to shut the superstars down. And they just had no answer for it. And I'm I'm hearkening back to something I've said many times on this podcast about what I find most frustrating about this team sometimes, and particularly the superstars. If they can't play the style they want to play, they have no answer for it. So is this something heading into the playoffs that we find concerning? Or is it just, hey man, the Colorado Avalanche are a good team. They're going to get the best of most of their opponents. Some nights. I think it's a hundred percent concerning because this goes back three years. Like we saw the Montreal Canadians play this game plan where you just you shut down the middle of the ice and you let them just backpedal and sidestep and back pass and pivot all around the perimeter of the ozone and just don't let them get to the middle. Like I, I thought they that Colorado game was was a bit of a strange hockey game. I don't think they played that bad. I think Colorado's a very good hockey team. Like, holy shit, their defense is really good. Um, but they just they just couldn't get to the middle of the ice again. And and it's they how many great opportunities did they have? None. It's just it, it it's pretty obvious now that teams, when they really want to, can figure out that game plan against them. And 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 it's just shut down the middle of the ice. Let them just pass around the perimeter because they'll pass it around the perimeter all day long. And I, I, I am, I, I don't mean, I don't want to come on this podcast and be negative, but it is something to be concerned about because it does happen every single season. Like game seven last year, same thing happened. Just passing it around the perimeter all game long and good teams know how to play that style when they really need to knuckle down and beat this hockey team. So I think it is, it is a little bit concerning for sure. Yeah. And it, is it an effort thing? Like, do you think having Ryan O'Reilly in the lineup la- uh, against the Avalanche would have made a difference. I personally well, do. Like, of course, yeah. yeah. Like, if you're adding a good player into your lineup, I, I you would think it would make a difference, but... Like, is it, like... The, I, the I just na- feel like they get lulled into it. Yeah, like, the it's naysayers just- will say they're not paying the price. Like, the, the, the old-school hockey fan will go, they're not paying the price. They're not doing what they need to do to get to the middle of the ice and generate those chances. But at a certain point... 
it's like what I said about the Buffalo loss. A leopard doesn't change its spots. I think the Buffalo game was different. Like they they stopped playing hockey against the Buffalo Sabers. Like they just stopped flat out. They they were dominating that game, and then halfway through the second, something just came over them, and they just stopped playing hockey. Like that, I didn't like that loss. That loss was not good. When I look at the Avalanche loss, like Colorado Avalanche are a fantastic hockey team. Like they, to me, like. It, it, people always want to match up the Leafs against other teams on paper. Um, they don't match up to this team on paper. Like, I think the Avalanche could play the style that the Leafs can play better than they can. And they also have the skill to play the system to shut down the Leafs, which is shut down the middle. But usually the Leafs thrive on turnovers and and, and speed going up the ice. But Colorado Avalanche. They were the faster hockey team. Their, their D is yeah. too fast. Like, yeah. John Tavares cannot break away from anybody on that hockey team. Like, it's just Michael Bunning can't break away from anybody. Like, they are just a... You you understand why this team won the Stanley Cup. They can skate. There's been a lot of uh, talk, and rightly so, about the powerhouse that is the Eastern Conference versus, like, the West, which is not as impressive. The Colorado Avalanche, man, oh. I'd put them against any team in this league based on what I saw. They, they're on they're one of the night. best skating hockey teams I've ever seen. Like, just top to bottom, forward defense, just they can fly. Like, they are really good. But it was still, the like, Leafs could have won that game. They had a lot of opportunities to win that game. Sam Sonoff was fantastic. Yeah, like, it's not like they, they got dominated. Like, I thought they played very well, but. I mean, they lost a shoot. I don't care about shootouts. Shootouts don't, don't, those don't bother me. But at the end of the day, it is an L. It is the, I was actually doing some research because I was like, they've lost two in a row. Research. This, this team doesn't lose two in a row. So I go back. Last time they've lost two in a row was mid January. So that just shows you how consistent this hockey team's been. But yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, yeah, like we can't, we can't look into it too much. Like it, it, we really can't, but. I think I think if if you're the coaching staff and if you're the players and you're watching film, it's I I like the example of like this is that was the type of game six or game seven that you have lost in previous years. That style of hockey game. And how do you fall out of that lull? Like I feel like when teams force them to play like that, it's 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 almost like they can't snap out of it in a way. It's like you're, they are working hard. They are skating hard. Like they're going around, but they just can't, they can't penetrate. And it's just, they need to find that like switch where they're just, they can recognize what's going on and just fix it. But it's just like, you almost get lulled into it. And then, and then it's the end of the game and you and you lose or you're going into overtime. It's just, they need to find a way to, to recognize what's happening and, and find a solution for it earlier than they have. Let's talk 11 and seven. Um, without question, in my opinion, from what I've seen, the number one topic amongst the fan base online right now is 11 and seven. And it's the usual thing, right? You have the one crowd that is like 11 and seven is great. We're getting guys in. They're getting acclimated with the system. You and I talked about it last week about the benefits of it. You, the more your superstars are on the ice, um, the better, like it's only a good thing when your superstars are getting more ice time. Then you've got the other side of the spectrum, which is. Let these guys develop chemistry. Keith is galaxy braining. 11 and 7 also means more Alex Kerfoot. Like, when in my opinion, I think the answer lies somewhere in the middle. There are, are benefits for 11 and 7 and negatives uh, with respect to 11 and 7. I hope that this is not something that Sheldon Keefe is... I'm getting a bit worried about Sheldon Keefe here. Like, if I can, if I can just like come clean about how I'm feeling. Like I need a therapy session from you and from you watching on YouTube. I I'm getting a little bit worried about Sheldon Keefe. Why? I just think he's getting a little, <sighs> like he's just overthinking this a I little much. I'm pretty, you hit on it. Fine. Let's just say what it is. You hit on it last week. I think Sheldon Keefe is way more concerned about being Mr. Nice Guy and not hurting anybody's feelings, particularly his favorite hockey player in the NHL, Justin Hole. And he's just... Sit somebody out, dude. Like, I just don't... I'm pretty wishy-washy on the 11 and 7. Like, there, there's one minute where I'm... I'm like, you know what? It, you have seven guys... Like, they, who's the... 
Who's the forward they're going to call up? It's just a nobody. So Bobby McMahon. You look at the Bobby f- McMahon's lighting up the American Hockey League. You look at the forward group. It's as soon as all these trades went down, all we debated was the lineup. Yeah. So when you have eleven forwards, that li- you're seeing multiple different versions of that lineup minus Ryan O'Reilly. So there's there, there's the argument that if everyone gets used to playing with each other, then maybe that can kind of create chemistry throughout the entire lineup, not just, just specific lines. Like there's, there's that argument. And then there's also like, but then there's the other side where it's what you're doing with your D like seven D um, guys, ice times diminish. So it's kind of like, okay, you're giving these guys some like in game load management in a way, but then it's the opposite with the forwards. It's, now forwards are getting more ice time. It's just, don't you think if you're a forward and you're coming back to the bench and you're just like, who am I going out with now? Like, again, I, I know with the superstars, it doesn't matter. Like, throw Matthews, Marner, Nylander out there. Throw to, like, but when you're like a bottom six guy and you're you're a role player and you come back to the bench and Sheldon Keefe is back there, like, that dude must get home and just collapse from exhaustion after doing this because he's constantly pairing Different line combos all game long. I think when I just heard you talk there, it hit me that even though you could argue the benefits of of this, it, it's not a long-term solution. I'm kind of worried that it is, though, because you hit on it last week, and I think you're right. Hurt someone's feelings, man. Like, look at Justin Hall and say, you're out. Justin Hall is not coming out of the line. I ju- look at... Uh, I- like we got we got barbecued for saying it, but like look at Mark Giordano and say take a night off. Mark Giordano, Kale McCarr, Mark Giordano is still spinning in circles after Kale McCarr blew past him last night. Yeah, McKinnon too. So it's like well, there's also like yeah, it's Lilligren. You could make the you guys. We came on here and we were like, what are you doing benching Timothy Lilligren? He he struggled, and I think maybe sitting him out. Maybe it affected his confidence. I don't know. He hasn't looked like the same player since Keith sent him up to the press box. I just think, like, hopefully, like, Shen will be back here. Yeah, that, that, that's the other factor. You, have a, you just have way too many defensemen for, way, for, for six spots. And, yeah, it's like he's being too, like, he's trying to give Eric Gustafson the some leeway here. But I don't he, think Eric Gustafson's been that bad. But, but he doesn't want to sit. One of his guys. Yeah. So it's this is and this is the problem. Like, well, you, like from what I've seen, it's if if the playoffs start today and they go with six D, like Gustinson isn't playing. So, I mean, I, I don't know. But yeah, he almost is being too. It is kind of rep hockey ish where everyone's got to yeah, get. This a isn't nice, house league. Not everyone and, paid their fee and gets an equal amount of ice time. Sheldon, like this is the profession. This is professional hockey. Hurts someone's feelings. Yeah, I mean, I. I don't think it's a big deal right now, but I, I don't think you're going into what is chemistry. Like the, the 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 word chemistry when it when it comes to a line is so like it's such you can't quantify it. You know, like there there's been lines in the history of hockey that have had chemistry. Like I, the first line that comes to my mind is the HBK line for the Penguins. Like, that was a line that came in together in the playoffs and had chemistry. But really, like... I think chemistry matters when you're dealing... When you're, like, if you're dealing with superstar hockey players, I don't think it matters as much. I don't think, like... I think if you're a superstar, they can put, like... And especially, like, with their with their quote-unquote big four up front, like, they've all played together. Like, Nylander and Tavares have played together, Matthews and Marner, Marner and Tavares, Nylander and Matthews. Like, they've all played together, so they all know each other, and then you're just inserting different linemates. But I think when you get into the bottom six and you start looking at guys who are supposed to be playing specific roles and are out there in certain situations, I do think chemistry matters, and I think he's messing with that right now, all because he doesn't want to hurt Justin Hall's feelings. Yeah. I mean, I think the line, the line that's only really been consistent throughout this 11 forward project has been Cam, Fachari, and Aston Reese. Like, I find that they're always on the ice together, and then it's Kerfoot and Lafferty that kind of get, and Yarncroc that kind of get mixed in with the with the top four guys. So he's trying to, maybe he's trying to create that as their, their checking line, I guess. Like, I I don't know, but I'm getting a bit worried about him. I'm not going to lie. I'm getting a bit worried about it. It's not a long-term solution. Like I, I, he he has been, 
he got out coached by John Tortorella in the bubble. He got out coached by Dom Ducharme. He got out coached by John Cooper. And now we're heading into the playoffs, and he's. I don't know what he's doing. He's trying but to be what, everybody's you don't like pal. This. Like, you really don't like 11 and 7. Like, that's the it's, vibe no, 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 I'm no, getting no, no. from you. Here's what I'll say. I don't trust Sheldon Keefe right now. That's my thing. I don't I don't trust Shell I don't think Sheldon Keefe knows what he's doing. I think he is in a in a spot right now where he's trying to it's like, dude, this is as cutthroat as it gets. Your job is on the line. You are out the door if you don't win a round. So you better stop worrying about being everybody's pal and start worrying about who are the best six guys that I can put out there and start getting them acclimated and getting everyone ready because there's only, what, 15, 16 games left? Like, we don't have time for you to be everybody's pal. Like, we don't have time. So it's not about if it's not about 11 and 7 or 12 and 6. It really, it, whatever works, quite honestly, whatever's going to win a goddamn round is what I'm for. But, like, his track record in the postseason is getting outcoached. And now we're... we're we're kind of fumbling around with the lineup here with 15, 16 games to go. I wonder how much Kyle has input on, on this as well. Like, yeah, I mean, the, the, there, there's, there's, there's always been that manager or coach general manager. And you wonder how much the general manager and the coach get along when it, t- when it comes to putting together in the lineup, you know, these two guys are pretty much on the same page. I wonder how much Kyle's saying, do this, do that. I mean, if at all, like I don't know, but it is. There's also there's also the Matt Nyes factor. Like like if when Matt Nyes is ready to go, like he that spot that that twelfth forward spot is is being saved for him. I I think that the the eleven forwards does not bother me at all. I think having a bunch of different guys play together on different shifts, I, I really don't think it's a massive deal. Other than the fact that guys are taking on a bigger workload. I think for the D though, it's like set, being on the bench with seven D. Like it's that's that's awful. Like if I was playing, I, seven guys, like your ice time is going to cut dramatically. Like it's just, and and then you, you need to develop. I think chemistry with with a D partner is is more is easier to establish than than with three guys in a forward group. And you hit on it. I'm sorry. I, f- I sound like a broken record here. I keep coming back to this, but it's like, I feel like the reason we're in this situation, like you can give me all this stuff about chemistry and learning the system all you want. These guys are professional athletes. The reason this is happening with seven guys is because Sheldon Keefe does not want to tell his favorite hockey player that he can't play anymore. And he doesn't want to look at 39 year old Mark Giordano and say, take a night off. We're going to need you in, in April. Or or who or Eric Gustafson and saying, "Hey, you're a depth piece." Uh, Luke Shen, same thing. I don't know. Like it just. Uh, I don't know. It sounds like I'm being super negative, and at the end of the day, if it works, I don't care. It's just I'm I'm losing faith that Sheldon Keefe is knows what he's doing. Basically, yeah. Well, I I, I don't like the guy you're referencing, Justin Hole. Like he he's not going anywhere, man. Like he was on the ice Sheldon with Keefe's favorite. Hockey he, he was on the ice with Jake McCabe all night. Like it's. Like Lilligran at fourteen minutes, a hole at seventeen. Like you it's... go down if you go down in Sheldon Keefe's basement, he's got a Justin Hall jersey just like this behind him, framed. It's his most prized possession that he owns. Yeah, yeah, no, it's he he loves him and loves it, him. Uh, and like you like I didn't see Mark Giordano on the ice that much against Colorado. Didn't like see, you know, didn't like, see uh, Sam Lafferty uh, as that game went on too either. He, he, another problem with that hockey game too. Another pro- the two games that they lost, another problem too is they took way too many penalties. Like that's like they they were on the on the PK all night against Colorado and it, that you just can't you can't win like that. And that leads into Speaking of on the PK, Mitch Marner, 29 minutes and seconds. I sent you a text last night saying, if I am Mitch Marner's agent, I am making sure this game gets stashed into the archives near the top. So when I go to a negotiation table and I need to make the argument why Mitch Marner is the most important player on this hockey team, that is the first game I'm pulling up. Holy shit, that guy was on the ice the entire game. He's he It's because he does it all. He literally like he, does. He it was. All. Li- I don't. I don't think there was a shift he wasn't on the ice. Like he was on the ice the entire game, and that to me that just shows you. Like it's 
Like if he can play every situation, then he could easily go to a negotiation saying I'm the most important player on this team. Like, I like, yeah, like we all know that Matthews is, but I mean technically, like on paper, logically, when you are on the ice in every situation and you're the player that's trusted to do that, five on five, five on four, penalty kill, power play, like he he, could, he is the most like he could be the most important player on the team. I think he is. I don't think. Could be. I think we say that about Matthews because Matthews has all the accolades, and when Matthews is going, he's in a like playing to his full potential, which he's starting to sort of rev up to a little bit. Jonas Siegel had the piece um, a day or two ago talking about how he was in fact dealing with a hand injury. Um, so, but when Matthews is going, he he's he can shift a game with his goal scoring ability. But when it comes to like being a complete hockey player who plays in all situations and is impactful in every situation that he's in. There is no argument that Mitch Marner is the most important Maple Leaf on the team. I mean, Matthews was on the, like looking at it now, he did almost have 27 minutes of ice time. So it's really, it, it's, it's, it's almost like a full PK difference. Like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a two minute difference, but I mean, I, I, I noticed Marner on the ice more than I noticed Matthews. Like this guy was everywhere. Yeah. So, I mean, that, Make sure you store that away and you and you show whoever's leading this team and that next negotiation being like this guy is this guy's everywhere. He does he does it all for our team. Can we put to bed the goaltending debate now? Yeah, it's a it'd be a slap in the face, in my opinion. Unless it's again, it's I think for the amount of games left, it it, it can still impact the goaltenders. Like Sam Sonoff could still play the next five games and if he's awful for those five games then it goes back but as of right now if if this guy's not the starting goalie to me it's a complete slap in the face to him they're they're only they have as of right now they have 89 points and the lightning have 86 so you do need to be careful it's not a situation here where you can look and go oh we're gonna rest samson off the bulk of the way and and get more murray more starts it's like you do need to be strategic because at this point in time samson off gives you the best chance to win and you don't want to piss away the home ice advantage against the Lightning. Yeah, like he's just, if you look at his numbers, like he's just, he's just been, he's having a better year. I mean, he's played less games, I'll say that. But like statistically, like this is where Freddie Anderson was at save percentage, but he's rocking a better goals against. So it's, I mean, the guy's been fantastic. Like I don't think you could ask for anything more for bringing in a guy in on a flyer and who's an RFA at the end of the season. Like it, this guy's, I, it'd be a slap in the face if he's not the starting goaltender in game one, if it started tomorrow. It's, again, though, getting back to my... Um, I just think that conversation is actually kind of a joke, to be well, honest with but you. But it's getting back to everybody's pal, Sheldon. And I listen, I get it. You don't want to go out and, and, and bury a guy in the media. But I, he just seems lately to be going out of a... In case you haven't noticed, everybody, Ryan and everyone watching home, Sheldon keeps getting on my nerves lately. In case you haven't noticed. He just seems... Like, like, he, he, all he wants to do is go out and be like, well, I thought Matt Murray actually wasn't. No, Sheldon, he was awful. And he can't stay healthy. And sure, he, just say it. Right now, Samsonov is our guy. But they won't do that because that might hurt Matt Murray's feelings and we can't hurt anyone's feelings. I mean, or it could create inner competition. Like, you could also make that argument. Too, well, he clearly doesn't see it that way. I, I just see, like, I get the just, always, I've always had this underlying feeling that they just, they look at what Matt Murray did in 2016, 2017, and they just think they could, like, recapture that. But that was a long time ago. Yes. Like, that was, like, that was six years ago. Yes. Like, you know, like, that's, to me, like, you got to reward the guy. Who, I also who, like Sam Sonoff. Like, he, his post games are always kind of silly. Like, he seems like a guy who is, just goes out there and plays. And Matt Murray's, like, he's, like, handling a, a, a breakable vase. Like, if you trip, you could break him. Like, he just, yeah. it's just, I don't know. He just, uh, Sam Sonoff is playing with this kind of fun chip on his shoulder. And a guy who, who just, he just seems like he's brimming with confidence and having a genuinely good time. And I love that about him. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's... I mean, they're two different... Like, Matt Murray's got more of, like, a, a big stature in the net and doesn't move too much, and Sam Sonoff's more of a... Does, does he remind you a bit of Freddie? Who? Sam Sonoff? He's a little more athletic. Yeah. I, I think... I mean, Freddie, when he wasn't playing well, wasn't quiet and was moving around his net too much, but I think Sam Sonoff makes more... 
athletic saves. But I, I, I mean, last time I watched Freddie Anderson stop a puck, that was a long time ago. But I think Sam Samsonov is a little more athletic. Yeah, for sure. Anyways, that's that's my main thing. I wanted to just get off my chest today. And, is and that like I just I, I I'm looking at at like. If Mike Babcock was doing the things Sheldon Keefe was currently doing, we'd be sitting here right now carving him, roasting him. Everyone would. But I don't know. I think one more thing. I've I've I have one more like market buy like I, I question myself with this take because is it market bias? Because I'm only watching the Leafs. Their power play every single season is a top five power play. They're third in the league in power play right now. And they've always had a top power play. And, and that means they have a good power play. But from everyone who, who's in this market, who watches this team every game, I just want to know if they're seeing what I'm seeing. And that's, yes, they have a top five power play every single season, which is nice. But when, it, when they need a power play goal, they do not get it. Pass, like, pass, 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 yeah, pass, like they pass, just, pass back to they, Morgan Riley into the crowd. Yeah, like it's just... <laughs> he, he's, he, yeah. he hit the net. He hit the yeah, head he last scored, night. Yeah. Get him off the first power play. Like, get him off. Like, it's <laughs> like, try something new. Again, galaxy brain it's behind not, it's the bench. Even, it's just like all it's all of them. Like, I, I don't know. I, mean, pass, I think pass, this pass, might pass, be a, a, pass, a market pass. bias take, but I just think that... No, I've they, seen they that. Just can't, they can't score a clutch power play goal. Like, I've seen it in the playoffs, too. Like, that's kind of what I'm getting to is like, when you get to the playoffs, you get to game six, game seven. Can you score? Like Tampa Bay did that last season. I was listening to uh, the Leafs um, uh, post game show last night with our buddy Sam McKee. And they, they kind of said the same thing. They were like, what? They're third in the league? Like, what's everybody else I, doing? Every <laughs> single year, I always say that. I'm like, their power play kind of sucks. And <laughs> then you look and it's like, no, they're top five. And it's, <laughs> you can only say so much at that point. It's okay. Like, yeah, I guess they do have a good power play. Maybe it's just a market bias take, but I, when they need that power play goal, it's just, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe yeah. maybe I'm just looking too much into it, but I just feel like they need to clutch up a little bit with the man advantage. Pass, 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 pass. You, so you weren't a huge fan of the five forwards. I just I, I don't, don't even think, know what to do. I just don't think Morgan Riley. Wait, he's not He's not a shooting threat. That's, no, that's the and, problem and he with has Morgan a hard Riley. time holding the line lately. And, like, I, listen, I thought he played really well against Colorado. I've, I've been harsh on Morgan Riley on this pod. I thought he played really well. I thought that was his best game of the season by far. He strikes me as a guy. I've come on here many a time and, and talked about William Nylander and, and the, the, like, the difference having confidence makes. And I think Morgan Riley's a classic example of the other direction, of a guy whose confidence is, like, really struggling. So I don't want to sit here and say I thought he played like shit against the Avalanche. He didn't. He played well. But overall, I would like to see a different look back there. I don't know. Like you, you like I said, you weren't a huge fan of the five forwards. Maybe you don't want to go that route again. Like who's another defenseman? Eric that you would Gustafson, go back? Eric is, Gustafson is technically their leader in points as defenseman. Like he he has the most points by a defenseman on any team in this on this or any player on this roster so some like, guy some guy is watching this right now and is going you had him and you traded him to the capitals but but no he's he's not wrong though like i always thought sandy could have fit into that role as well like i i, I never was against that take it's just i mean i would i've always wanted them to like set up willie and like the stamkos ov spot like i think he's the only guy who has the one time ability to to pull that shot off. I, I Matthews is is incapable of taking a one timer. I, I don't know. For a guy who's such an amazing wrist shot, this guy sucks at one timing the puck. Marner can't do it. Tavares can't do it. So I, I mean I would like to see Willie kind of get a shot in that in the in the dot, kind of getting that one timer, but I mean, again, but they're, again, they're th they're third in the league in the power play. So like you you feel stupid. There's a lot of people who'd be like, well they're third in the league. And you're like, yeah, I guess you're right. But yeah. I, for like it's just you're in the market you're watching them every game and it's, it just seems like they don't get that clutch power play goal when they need it like yeah. I, I don't know um luke shen making his return to scotia bank arena tomorrow night i'm really hoping he gets the hero's welcome that he he um he deserves why why does he deserve a hero's welcome he doesn't based on play alone he doesn't but he was like that that's what i don't get it's it's no, you've no, been no, no. talking about the hero's welcome. I just don't understand why this guy 
deserves like a hero's welcome. I, I understand the story. I understand that's how... why. If you listen, if you want to sit here and you want to chart down, does like as the as a hockey player, does he deserve a hero's welcome? The answer is no. But he's the prodigal son. He was drafted. Pull up the clip he's of gonna, Berkey. Yeah, is, someone asking for to trade him, and Berkey's like, "This guy's gonna be our captain." I always in a few remember years. like the the shot of Shen too. He was like outside. He was in his Leaf jersey, yeah. he had the cap on. Yeah. And he was like, "Give me our future captain." Yeah, and he was put, and and Poor you guy. said it. He was put in a in a rough spot. Like he didn't like the the team that he played for stunk to high heaven. Ron Wilson was his first coach, for God's sakes. Yeah. So it's like. I, it's a nice story, a but nice I, I don't story. think he's gonna get like the. Ov- everyone's making it out like he's oh, gonna get like Ryan. he's gonna get an ovation. Ryan, he's gonna get an ovation. Why? Why do you think they don't they're give anybody play, an ovation? They're gonna play a video of him getting drafted, and he's gonna get an ovation. I, I don't get that. All this guy has to do. Like, what kind of ovation are we talking Ryan, about here? An ovation. People, Toronto, Torontonians like, love. Their own. They love guys who were cultivated by the organization. That's why so many of them are looking at Sandin and Ingvall and going, no, come back 100%. This guy, all he needs to do, if I'm Luke's agent or his family member, I'm saying, listen, pal, like you've been in the league a long time. He's definitely, he'll be back next year. He's definitely going to sign like a league minimum deal to stay here next year. If I'm his, his representatives or his family, I'm saying, listen, Go out there, you lay a couple of hits. If the opportunity arises, you drop the mitts, and they're going to slap an alumni jacket on you. And for the rest of your life, you're going to be going to Ford dealerships with Wendell Clark, signing autographs. And He already has an alumni jacket. There, there's guys in the alumni box who, even, who haven't even, like... <laughs> Even what he's done with the team, like he's still gonna get an alumni jacket. That's what I'm talking about. Like, yeah. You hear, you hear, like Overdrive always making jokes about the alumni box. Yeah. And they they mention the odd name, and you're like, why, the, why is that guy in the alumni <laughs> box? <laughs> Wait for them for like a year. <laughs> like, you see, uh, um, Nola Chari got a a cookie sponsorship because his nickname is Cookie because yeah. he loves cookies. So he cuts a deal with Tim Hortons, and now he's like. Cookie guy for Tim Hortons. Old Chari's nose is going in eight different directions. <laughs> that guy, that you want to, you want to know how tough that guy is. Yeah. Just look at his nose. Yeah, oh, yeah. How many times has that thing been broken? Oh yeah. Oh my god. Oh, it's great. They, they they do a close up on it. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> God, how many times that thing gets snapped back to its right position? <laughs> Fuck. Uh, all right. So. Carolina Friday, Ottawa Saturday. I'm anticipating a really good effort against the uh, Carolina Hurricanes and then a classic little. I, I do like I do, it in I, I do the like the line. I don't know what I, I don't know if I've have, I haven't seen that. I, mean, I don't know if it's even been announced yet, but I like the idea of Matt Murray playing in Ottawa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like that. That's a good that's a good game for him to get into. Yes. And they have some that's that's an emotion type of game that that I would like happen. I don't know what's going to happen yet, but that that would be that would be a nice little story. All right, buddy. Let's get out of here. We'll be back on Sunday after those two games. Um anything else you want to add? Spread the word, tell your friends. Thanks so much for checking us out. Hit that like and subscribe button below. We really appreciate it. Also head over and give us a follow on Instagram, give us a follow on TikTok. There's a video. I think it's the the Austin Matthews video where these, like, four guys are just going at it about Leafs versus Oilers, and it's getting contentious. I haven't seen it. It's getting personal, and it's just like, you guys... You guys need to relax. <laughs> like seriously, it's a it's it's hockey. Calm down. What is when does when does an online debate just need to like when do, when when is when one of those guys need personal. to start looking in the mirror and be like maybe I should just stop commenting. The, oh man, no. The best the best are the ones who comment on and we're we're not the only ones who get it. Anyone who does leaf content, you, you get the whole like someone will just write first round exit or like. 1967 or none of this matters all that matters is where they're at like is when they get the golf clubs out or something but like you know that what? but it's true though like yeah, that's yeah. that's what's that's what's annoying about it yes. it's 
It's like you're just a troll, but at the end of the day, like how are you gonna what are you gonna say back to that? that? That's literally what happens every year. So it's kind of annoying how you've no you've no comeback to that. Yeah. All right, we're gonna get out of here. Do all the things I just said. Also, if you're uh listening to the audio version, leave a little five-star review and a comment. That every little bit helps. See you guys next time.